take time and hear this prophetic encode, we have a choice, a decision to make at this particular point in time, and we had better pay close attention. High Priest Quatamani, Supreme Soothsayer, Soul Seer, Spiritual Healer and Revealer, Chief Elder of the Quatamani First Genesis Tribe, the oldest, longest sustained, raw and living, plant fuel consuming, family community order known over half a century and still going strong. May I greet you in the most supreme spirit of love and I say, listen, listen, listen. Speaking straight, no chase. Children of the sun on the verge of being spiritually erased. Soul rip stripped and torn apart. Roots, foundation, and base. Can't seem to unwind from the historical bind that continues to leave so many deaf, dumb, blind. Standing in line, perpetuating the I, me, my mind crime as the signs of the time. And what could be worse? than a cold, pale, frozen soul being ripped, stripped, raped, and sold the idea of volunteering to sell out his or her soul. The psychological con game to keep one stuck, stagnant, suffering, grueling, misery, aches, pains, too frustrated, too aggravated, too weak, too depleted to change. The pathway of the next generation, more weakened and depleted souls, set to become the fuel of the soul-sucking patrol. Time for the sake of few of you to be bold, break the codes of the self under the control of the soul sucking patrol. Have mercy on your soul. The I and I walk in this deep meditational vibration and the echoes of the sacred ancestral order was whispering harmoniously in the ear of the I and I. And the message was, please don't worry about a thing, because every little thing within this divine order movement is going to be all right. Then the oldest old man double gripped his stick and spoke. He said, we have no more time for slowpoke folk. It's time, time for the feminine phenomenon to be awoke. Got to reach a then I had a flashback. Yeah, and I was remembering over 70 years ago, there was a couple of happenings around, and that grandmother of the I and I came and collected I and said, Son, I'll need you to come and sit down because we'll need to communicate with the unseen vibrations. I mean, they used to say this to I all the time. And I would sit and whatever would happen at the end of the day, every little thing would seem to be all right with those who were there to hear or feel or sense a sense of message. I remember that sacred ancestral elder saying to the I and I, you have a mission, my son. And no matter what, we will be there, seen and unseen. This is for the mother spirit who has held the line of that sacred ancestral remembering. He put a spell on the face of the eye, eye. But I was young, you see? I was young. I wasn't clear on a lot of things that was going on around I. She knew. I mean, she knew a time of change would come. And she would go to church on Sunday and sing for the deliverer, to deliver her. You see, the I was born as a sacred ancestral soothsayer, a soul seer, a revealer, a spiritual healer. And this was encoded in I from a small child. She would tell me, child, I ain't singing to that dear picture up on that wall. She said, I'm singing to my ancestors to come deliver me from this here bondage. So by this time, the I, I was big enough to reason. The I, I was in that season of whole life change. And within that, those around were showing the I, I how lost they were as it related to their connection with their soul, whole energy. 
then I was kind of like, Grandma, what is going on? And she said, baby, what is going on is beyond the mind of man, he and she, but there has been a lot of corruption, a lot of disruption, and we, as the sacred ones of that blessed ancestral tribal unit, that tribe, that first Genesis tribal unit, always remember that. That we have to carry out a sacred mission of resurrection. And it's going to be very difficult for you because you will appear at times not to have any support. And every time you align a sacred few to few to few, those beings will break off into their self and go on their own pathway into an oblivious nothingness. Yeah, and I said, but why? Why would someone want to sojourn into oblivious nothingness? Nothing from nothing leaves nothing, Grandma. She said, baby, the answer to that remains to be resolved by those who take the sojourn into oblivious nothingness. We're talking about those who are on a focus of resurrecting the sacred ancestral soulful essence of who he and she be and connecting that to the generation next and next and next and next and next. And as I began to reason with a few things, then I began to comprehend what's going on today. Why would anyone defy the essence of life for a personal goal or objective? Can't it be seen? that one is a part and parcel of a collective wholeness called the essence of life, begin to realize that, you know, this is a difficult challenge because there's been so many different earthly distractions inflicted by a nature of energy opposed to our family communal existence, our sacred ancestral existence as divine children of the sun emerging out of that sacred garden presence with a purpose of maintaining collective oneness. When I looked at the various things that we talked about in the first presentation, part one, I began to, to recollect what would happen if someone actually went through a Willie Lynch syndrome. Listen, listen, listen. Syndrome, an identifiable pattern of energy that produces an identifiable pattern of thinking, reasoning, and actions over and over again. Quote, let us make a slave. What do we need? First of all, we need a man, a pregnant woman, and her baby boy. Second, we will use the same basic principle that we use in breaking a horse, combined with some more sustaining factors. What we do with horses is that we break them from one form of life to another. That is, we reduce them from their natural state in nature. Slave makers, spirit breakers, soul takers. Quote, the Negro breakers would use violence, torture, brutality, and humiliation to break the spirit of the slave. Page 89, exposing. Breaking the bonds between he and she. In animal husbandry terms is called domestication. In terms of the human soul, it is an abomination. Back to the syndrome. Quote, whereas nature provides them with the natural capacity to take care of their offspring, we break that natural string of independence from them and thereby create a dependency status so that we may be able to get from them useful production for our business and pleasure. End of quote. Page 338 from the New Book One by High Priest Quatamani. To prevent that kind of conscious reasoning to be consumed, you simply make it appear as though if it's not really, really what happened. When every single thing within your eyeballs, within your collective conscious reasoning, lets you know that not only is it 
a factual reality. Not only is it a major tool for establishing the breaking of a population, it is something that did go on and continue to go on to keep mass populations locked in a toxic parallel. So if we cannot get a holistic living encode into the brain, into the mind of a being, if we cannot connect with the whole soul essence within that being, because it is there, it's just locked in a box. We have to first make Every single thing as simple and as clear as possible as it relates to what has gone on. That means that so much time will be taken just laying out the pathway that would occur if one was sitting in their garden and all of a sudden a pack of renegade murderers and pounced upon them and began to rape and enslave and torture them and then turn them into perpetual slavery by a notation written in their language, a language that had no meaning inside of your communal order, your village family community. The sounds sound so harsh to your ears. You're feeling that, oh wow, this person needs help there. They're obviously they're in pain. Let's see what we can do and help them. And if you are a person who feel, even if the person is saying something in their linguistic pattern, you can feel the suffering, grueling, misery, aches, and pains of that being. And you will do your best to try to help them, not knowing that they have the most vicious plan against you. We grant you by these present documents with our apostolic authority full and free permission to invade, search out, capture, and subjugate the Saracens and pagans and any other unbelievers and enemies of Christ, wherever they may be, as well as their kingdoms, duchies, counties, principalities, and other property, and to reduce their persons into perpetual slavery. What is clear is that each and every one of those tribal units had a full recognition that man, he, and she emerged out of the most supreme essence of masculine and feminine energy. Therefore, giving no credence to the idea of a monotheistic male energy as the creator of all things. Ain't trying to offend those god fearing men who told us woman was the birth place of sin. And then, after a while, they crucified her son child, made her bend, waver and bow. Holy cow, must have been odd. She forced to worship the facade of a vengeful, jealous, monotheistic god. Spewing curse upon she as if she was the enemy. She, the mother of humanity. We were very clear that the feminine she is the birthplace, the first education center, the network of collective communal order, and that the male sending forward the fertilizing energies to open the door and the pathway for life to begin again. Yes, we knew of Set Sutik Satan. Yes, we knew of the demonistic energies that actually was there to keep us in check, to make us know full well that if you defy divine order, we await you as a soul-sucking patrol. What's really baffling to us is knowing this, why would so many volunteer to surrender their soul, sell their soul to that opposing nature of energy. Then the and I came to it, the holistic living reality, the supreme truth, that that actually has alerted and has awakened eye to communicate with each and every one of you today. And that is the nature of that energy that diametrically opposes the essence of who you be, spends 
each and every microsecond developing a shield of deception, a pale veil of deception to shroud you in a self-individualistic assertion and make you think and feel that that energy of self, your goal and objective as a self, your purpose within an individualistic claim of I, me, my mind is the most important goal that you could have because it is there to satisfy the self inside of you. This is when we have lost contact with the fact that your soul has been intruded and invaded upon by set, excuse me, self. We say self, we mean set. So take, say that. Listen, listen, listen. I certify to you that with the help of God, we shall powerfully enter into your country and shall make war against you in all ways and manners that we can and shall subject you to the yoke and obedience of the church and of their highnesses. We shall take you and your wives and your children and shall make slaves of them and as such shall sell and dispose of them as their highnesses may command. And we shall take away your goods and shall do you all the mischief and damage that we can as to vassals who do not obey and refuse to receive their Lord and resist and contradict him. And we protest that the deaths and losses which shall accrue from this are your fault and not that of their highnesses or ours, nor of these cavaliers who come with us. It's just a matter of how you speak the words in the language pattern from which you speak. But it is one and all the same. And the clear fact is, the ancestors let us know long, long time ago that that nature is the nature of the warlord. That, in fact, that is the deity of the warlord. That is, in fact, the deity of conflict, confusion, and chaos. It is the deity that actually hates all things green and growing. And then you'll understand the nature that opposes greener, so the conscious femininity, making it easy to see. It is the deity of foreign lands. That is to say, when the mind has become foreign, to the holistic living presence of divine order. Deity, nature of energy. That is the deity that actually controls the nature of self-individualistic movement. Knowing this, and then knowing that mass majorities of populations actually have lost such contact with the essence of who he and she be that they truly actually no longer can connect with that holistic living truth and reality. And then there are those who can hear it somewhat, but they can't connect. And they feel like, oh, I'll do that later. Right now, I want to enjoy my stuff and things and things and stuff, my fantasies, delusions, illusions, and dreamland version of what life is. Because he or she has been convinced and persuaded that life is but a moment. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. Not comprehending that the sacred ancestral elders of old long explained to us that life is an eternal process. You either remain in a continuous and ongoing soul journey through the experiences of life and living, or you diminish your life energy to a lower and lesser degree until it becomes consumed by the soul-sucking patrol. And as such, you then deplete into oblivious nothingness. This means that we're on a resurrection mission right now. And being on this resurrection mission that actually has to be orchestrated through divine social economic family communal order the most important 
challenge then would be to recover the sacred ancestral mother spirit, she, who is the birthplace of man, he and she, and at the same time, work diligently to break the shackles and chains on the feet, hand, and brain of the masculine he, so that he can once again step up to the plate of divine order, providing a collective, conscious, communal safety for each other, for making sure that this holistic living presence continue on and on and on into perpetuity within divine order. Being very clear that we are on a soul journey and not surrendering to all those different guises and disguises and deceptions, the pitiful ones who cry and moan to you to get you to step out of sync and out of focus with divine order, to get you in a place and a space where you can no longer reason with the sacred ancestral mission. We must resurrect the sacred ancestral soulful essence of who we be as divine children of the sun. We must resurrect that sacred garden culture from which we come. We must resurrect green earth solar consciousness. And we have to comprehend that there are those who stand opposed. So to wrap your whole life energy up trying to convince or persuade he or she who by their nature of energy has been reduced and deduced to a lower and lesser state of conscious reasoning that actually prevents them from moving. We do not ignore that being. We simply lay down the facts of supreme truth and move on. Now the decision is up on that being. The Requiem Toes have done a lot of damage. The aim was to reduce populations into perpetual slavery. The other syndromes have caused a lot of damage. Isms and schisms of self-asserting individualism. The wars, the conflicts, the confusion, the chaos has caused a lot of damage. We shall take you and your wives and your children and shall make slaves of them and as such shall sell and dispose of them as their highnesses may command. And we shall take away your goods and shall do you all the mischief and damage that we can. We have to recognize each and every one of those conflicts each and every stage of confusion and chaos as an opportunity to let go of anything within us that allows us to align with that toxic nature. Look, listen, learn, discern. The objective is to learn the lessons, retrieve the blessings so we can move into the essence of the divine union of oneness, collective conscious communal oneness. If we then take time to come to recognize that resurrecting that sacred ancestral mother spirit, putting her again into her place of sacred ancestral origin, recognizing that that's going to be a major challenge because she has been groomed and conditioned to eat out of the hand of the overlord. She's been groomed and conditioned to keep those offsprings in their place as loyal subjects to those who oppose his and her existence. If we begin to see where she is, then we will know clearly and unquestionably where he, the male, has to be because he's born from she. And those experiences, that mindset that has kept a sense of control and domination and rule over her consciousness. Quote, take the stud horse, break him for limited containment, completely break the female horse until she becomes very gentle, whereas you or anybody can ride her in her comfort. Breed the mare and the stud until you have the desired offspring. Then you can turn the stud to freedom until you need him again. Train the female horse whereby she will eat out of your hand, and she will in turn train the infant horse to eat out of your hand also. Let us make a slave. 
we have created an orbiting cycle that turns on its own axis forever unless a phenomenon occurs and reshifts the position of the male and female slaves. End of quote. Page 338, taken from the prophetic 12,594-year Banu cycle, encoding the consciousness of higher peace through the divine union of masculine and feminine energy, Book 1, by High Priest Kwatamani. Now, if we comprehend that, it will definitely make one feel like, wow, is this impossible? We already know that there's been a severe level of damage done to she. And that it is quintessential of the utmost important that we recover the essence of sacred ancestral femininity. And even though she have a deep-seated desire to want to be loved, want to be cared for, within her conscious encode, is a whole nother platform if you step outside of that parallel that she have come to worship, idolize, and glorify. That toxic parallel that actually has shown historically time and time again, centuries, that it defies the essence of who you be then you will come to comprehend that even to be loved by she is a threat to your life. Yet, we have to break the codes of that toxic disorder. So we have to come to another kind of reasoning if you happen to be a male who actually has been able to break the codes of that toxic disorder that was inflicted upon you, birthed through her, because the male was actually left to roam free like a stud like a nomad, just popping around, doing his thing, birthed from she, already groomed and conditioned to stay in his place. If you happen to be able to break the codes of that toxic disorder, then what the sacred ancestral wisdom states is that you then have gained enough sense, enough common sense reasoning to then set up a holistic living platform to resurrect your most precious jewel, the feminine she. Because it is she that will birth who you be from that point forward. So when we say, man, this is almost impossible, the truth is, if you actually hold that as your principle of thought and reasoning in action, you are actually declaring that you are on the pathway of Armageddon apocalyptic reality. And you're walking hopelessly in a toxic parallel, leading you deeper into oblivious nothingness. So, when that elder grandparent spoke to I over 70 years ago and said to the I and I, my son, you have a mission. At that time, I did not fully comprehend what it was that she was saying. Not in my mental conscious reasoning. Something deep within the soulful essence of who I be did comprehend. And as a result of that comprehension, I took on the mission as described and laid out to I by the most supreme seen and unseen revealing. Although many talk about the fact that, I mean, how do you know it is this or that as far as what has been revealed to you? Maybe that set nature revealed that to you. It becomes real clear to know what nature of energy is revealed to one. One has to get deep into the soulful essence of feeling mentally, physically, spiritually holistic living truth or toxic reality. It is simple to then comprehend the voice that's speaking into your ear simply by what that voice is telling you to do. Listen, listen, listen. It is a time that each and every one of us must come to recognize that it is a challenge 
and it's a challenge that we must take, that we must establish branches of family community order, that the feminist she, we must break the code to that toxic nature that keeps her locked into self-destruction, that keeps her continuing to breed offsprings, to feed that nature that opposed her existence, that fuel and work on their behalf. And she actually being placed in a limited state of simply being a heifer or whatever one wants to declare, being reduced to the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, simply being reduced to a lower and lesser being, looked upon animal-like to serve the will of one who has declared his being as being supreme, superior. Master Khan, but the thrill is gone. She saw what he was upon, broke her bond, refused to be a pawn in the coming dawn. She felt the heat of the rising sun as strange fruit hung. The pendulum swung and nobody could stop it. The expressions of a love supreme must be honored. Yet we must use our intelligence and our wisdom to actually work to forward family community units. Open our eyes, open our eyes that we may see the soulful essence, the soulful essence of who we truly be. We must use some of the ancestral wisdom. We must actually come into family units to tie together family units. That we must actually deal with the imbalances of masculine and feminine energy that we're facing. And that we must simply look at ways and means of being within an environment where we can grow our foods, where we can maintain our ancestral skills where we can uphold the life-giving forces and have a greater relationship with each other in a peaceful manner. We must come to a realization that this cannot happen within those chaotic environmental states and conditions that have been established to surround us and to keep us locked into the constant, daily conflict, confusion, and chaotic matters. And even though it may be put into one's consciousness that there are some things that's too low, you know, like working in a garden, growing foods and things like that, that that's a lesser thing. You must rise higher and sit in offices or make decisions with pencils and papers and, and do those kinds of things, count the money and all those kinds of things as a way of life and make sure that you push that upon your children because that states a status that you have achieved and made it within that parallel that status quo that oppose your existence. Refuse to assimilate, integrate, adopt. If you see her spiritual pursuits lead to ancestral roots, to quench her thirst, she seek the first Genesis man. Nothing less than a green personal conscious master plan. Yeah. We have to prepare a new frame of reference because we're actually starting from somewhere plus zero, I say as a few of the few of the few. We do have the ancestral knowledge, wisdom, and understanding forwarded to us through ancestral lines. We do have a sacred few of the few of the few who have somehow maintained a sense of ancestral comprehension to share that. And we do have a sacred few of the few within and among the feminine, within and among the masculine, who have looked at this thing long enough to say, I know that I need a massive amount of detox and purging to heal, but it is not going to happen so long as I continue to submit to the self-asserted will.
that oppose the existence of who I be. We must establish collective conscious communication systems, not simply over phones, but in thought, in reason, and then in the act of communicating while we work to build a new foundation that will serve the best interests of the generation next, 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 while at the same time serving our best interests as we deal with this supreme circle of life. Cause what go around come around in divine order. She needs the security of spiritual maturity, her soul at stake, critical life decisions to make, no fake, her emotions impacted, deeply attracted to a masculine he who's not distracted, but ready to deliver to give her a reason to rejoice. Her choice, the natural selection, he who provides divine guidance and protection. Her family community connection, bring in honor upon her for her nurturing affection. To multiply her every offspring and reflection. To be blunt of front, she bear the brunt of the wayfarer, the water bearer. She who must birth this green earth solar conscious era. Open.